Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm a parent of a 20-year-old child who's on the spectrum. Uh, my uh, topic for today, I'm at the back end of the session. I have to finish in five minutes myself. Uh, I just wanted to talk only about augmented and uh, virtual reality, which are new texts that are happening in the world. We do not have access to those texts in Chennai. And how did I come to that? Am I an expert on it? No. I'm just a parent and a special educator, and I work with children with special needs. Uh, my daughter, after finishing schooling, once I come to high school, many of them do not go on to college. Many of them end up in vocational training centers where they do not have any kind of mental stimulation. They get bored, they get depressed, and they start to get behavior problems like you would have heard of most of the parents talk about these things. So I started looking. My daughter is very much into Pokemon. So I downloaded the Pokemon Go game into the phone and I gave it to her. So this got me interested in argumentative um, reality and virtual reality. I just wanted to share a few things about this. I mean, people who don't know, uh, augmented reality is you can use it on your phone where a digital, digital avatar is inserted into your actual environment. And it will help you play a game or it, it is now being used for autism to teach them activities of daily life. If you see, uh, if you see she's wearing augmented reality glasses, the teacher is sitting here and she's asking the child who has very poor eye contact to find a face. So the child is expected to lift up her eyes and locate the face. Once she locates the face, the face is you know, superimposed with an image. It's not the actual face. If she gets, she gets it right, she gets a star and slowly the digital image fades away showing her real actual face. So this encourages eye contact improvement. A lot of our children suffer with difficulties with eye contact and this is one of the ways uh, augmented reality is being used. If you see virtual reality, this is does not have anything to do with the actual environment. Once a child wears those glasses, he is transported into a virtual world. And these virtual worlds can be anything. It can be uh, created in the lab as a uh, cartoon or it can be the actual real world outside which is taken as videos and project, project, uh, projected in the uh, glasses. So the child gets to experience a lot of things. So if you see, um, you can go to a mall, you can uh, walk in the forest, things like that. Uh, you can go, go to a shopping um, a supermarket, you can go to the temples, you can go to the beaches on top of mountains, you can experience everything through virtual reality. These texts are being used for our kids and this is happening only abroad. We do not have enough research or the funds. And when Ranjini told me uh, engineers are coming from Finland, I thought if you can establish a lab here in Chennai using uh, these texts and uh, give it to us at a low cost. So, uh, so that our kids also can experience, not just children with autism, but children with physical disabilities also who cannot go and experience things for themselves. If you are able to do this for us in Chennai, that would be a great thing. I'll just play a short video, I don't have time. So many of my students tell me that their mind is so disconnected from their body that they wish they could leave their body behind. In the world of virtual reality, suddenly you have a child who feels empowered, who feels that they have some control over their world. That's a whole different experience from the real world for people with autism. They're controlling everything. They're in charge. We have gone through lots of different headsets to figure out the best one. So this is actually a consumer launch Oculus. This one has a nice form factor for kids. This is Vijay. He's the CEO of a virtual reality company called Florio. 
Hence all the headsets in his basement. I'm also a dad. We have two kids, an eight and a four year old. And our son is on the autism spectrum. As parents of a child with autism, you're always looking for those moments where you find a healthy engagement with something. Is that where your pretend house is? Yeah. Manoj has a deep interest in maps and navigation. It's Ocean City. We call him our human GPS. Ocean City, Maryland. <laughs> Manoj makes you look at the world in a whole new way. Like he notices things that I don't notice. It's, it's, it's my in late 2015, Google Street View became available as a virtual reality application. Now it's satellite mode! It is satellite mode. I had a virtual reality headset, and I was really curious to see whether you enjoyed it or not. Come over here, put it on. He tried on the headset, and he loved it. What if VR could be used as a medium for coaching skills and eventually if you could prove it out, be therapy. What I've learned is that the autistic brain has neurological differences that can present different strengths and challenges. Our idea is that in VR, it's a 3D space. It involves the same kinds of navigation challenges and communication challenges, and that practice is just more useful, more applicable. Generally, people with autism tend to have difficulty communicating with others and focusing in group settings. So Vimma and Vijay created a company and started to make VR lessons that could build communication skills. Florio's lessons work on elements of a very important foundational skill called joint attention. Joint attention is the ability for two people to establish shared focus on the same object. It's a pretty important social skill that many people with autism tend to struggle with. What Vijay and Viva needed to prove is that VR could actually help children with autism build those types of skills and they needed a partner to help them do it. This is Celebrate the Children, a special needs school in northern New Jersey. And like most schools, they're trying to find innovative ways to use technology to help their students. They can then bring so much more to those face-to-face, real-life interactions to be able to express their ideas, to feel more in control and less anxious. Many of the students at Celebrate the Children have more severe forms of autism than Manoj. A lot are nonverbal, so even basic communication is a really big challenge. This is Max. He has limited language skills and he often struggles with using joint attention in the classroom. When Florio decided to pilot their program at Celebrate the Children, they wanted to find out if their VR tools could help kids like Max build skills like joint attention. Hey, so Max, how are you feeling today? Okay, so we're gonna put this on. Make sure you're okay with your glasses, right? All right, there we are. Keep looking around. Children. 
And uh, so this the, uh, research areas have been social skills, emotional skills, daily living skills, communication and physical activity, and also improving attention. And uh, the, these areas have shown significant uh, improvement in children with autism. Research has, I, I've given some research uh, uh, papers at the bottom if you need to go through them. Um, see, our environment, if you take India, it's very uh, loud and crowded. It's, it's it's very noisy. We enjoy it. We, we really uh, embrace this. But our kids find it difficult in these situations. If you can tailor make virtual reality videos, which can be played, and the kids can go to the lab and, and get simulated into it, and get you know desensitized to uh, like one of the parents was saying, standing in queue was a big difficulty for her child. Standing, going to a crowded temples was difficult. So these can be tailor made, like culture sensitive materials can be made for our kids and we can use them in our lab. I mean, because the, like, uh, the tech is very expensive, it cannot be bought by one parent. If a lab is created and you give, offer it to children, and many parents can come and access these things. So that, that, those are some of the requests, like creating a lab. And, uh, and also GPS enabled, like one of the parents had mentioned with her uh, uh, child alerts for epilepsy, a GPS enabled alert, especially when the child has uh, gone out of the perimeter that has been defined. Like you, in US and all the convicts have these on their ankles, monitors, uh, similar GPS devices, and also which can also uh, incorporate Fitbit kind of uh, um, uh, specifications into it so that there's the safety of the child is there and also we can get feedback on the state of the physical body of the child, whether he's having a, 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 an epileptic attack or his BP has gone up, he's having anxiety, his pulse rate has gone up, all this can be given to us as feedback. I thank you, uh, this is the last session, I thank Ranjini and I thank uh, Sir for giving me this opportunity and I hope it's been useful for all of you from Finland. Thank you all so much.